right, Bobby. And Megan. There we are. Hey, having Megan hey, hey. here is the best part of this podcast. Woo-hoo. Full stop. Amen. <laughs> fun, fun. I love it. Uh, Digging Deeper is our podcast we do after Sunday. We talk a little bit about the message. Uh, we can go dig, dig deeper into it. We can talk about stuff you cut, never made it to the, to the pulpit. Um, or really anything we want. Anything we want. Anything we want. Um, we actually had a big weekend this we weekend. We did. So besides just our normal continuation of the worship series, um, we even gave a nod to uh, Election Tuesday coming up, which is the day we're, we're filming yeah, today. We're actually recording right now on Election Tuesday. So yeah. hopefully you're out there voting uh, or you have already voted since you're probably listening to this after that fact. Yeah, yeah. great point. I did dig up in our um, handbook that uh, everyone's entitled to two hours off to vote. Nice. Which um, is funny because for the longest time here at Rise, we had voting in the lobby. So I'd be like, see you, Brandon. Got to take me two hours to go vote. Nice. Just walk right in, drop it off. Mariah awesome. told us earlier that she plans to take two hours to go vote today and then said, by the way, I voted on the first day of early <laughs> voting. So I have like voting panic. So I saw like, I forgot that you can vote early. So I saw the things go up and I was like, oh my gosh, it's the fourth. I got to go right now. And so I went and like was frantic the whole time and left. And I was like, wait, we haven't had Halloween yet. It's not November, and I realized I voted like a whole week early. It's fine. At least it's I did. It's fine. That's right. You yeah. did it. At least I did it. Um, no, actually, the other thing that made our week big was that we had women's retreat this we weekend yeah. up in Julian, and it was so beautiful. It was. It was like heart stopping. There was turkeys everywhere. Everywhere. You know they say turkeys are really aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, these ones were like no. docile trained. Yeah, you could like walk right by them. Yes. Yeah. No, they, they still scare me. Me too. I was like, now stay away. Um, and we had a couple of just really great sessions. We did. So um, I'll talk a little bit about it for you that were there and those that you weren't there. Come on out next time we have Women's Retreat. Um, but God gave our team this vision, like this picture for mm-hmm. our retreat this year of a butterfly, like a caterpillar in a cocoon coming out into a new season yeah. and new life and rebirth. And uh, we told the story at retreat, but we actually had a speaker who was lined up to come and speak. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of telling her all these things. And she said, I don't think I'm supposed to come and speak. I think God is doing a new work from within your church and taking rise into a new season. Yeah, mm-hmm. And I think there's some people that within your church that will be, should be speaking it. And Megan and I prayed about it and we ended up splitting We did the speaking, which yep. was super fun. And so I got to talk about um, some like, how do we get through hard, dark times with Jesus? Mm-hmm. And Megan got to talk about like, what about life after? Yeah. Like, like Jesus is with us in the hard times, but life with Jesus isn't all hard times. Right. How do you like live in and walk in that victory? Uh, and somehow she tied Justin Bieber into it. I sure did. It was <laughs> fantastic. There might be some videos still. I think there are a few flying oh, around. I'm really counting on mm-hmm. uh, Liz Amaral to have recorded that. Oh, I don't know. And turned it into a reel. Oh, so man. Liz, oh, if man. you haven't done that yet, the fact that on. we haven't seen it online yet is shocking to me. It was um, really I a had, masterpiece. I don't think anyone was truly prepared for it. No so, one was prepared. Yeah. You know, I had so many ladies on Sunday morning tell me about that moment. And they told me about like so many things, but someone was like, and she rapped. <laughs> That's like, she rapped and danced. And danced. It yes. was horrible dancing, I'm sure. For the record, <laughs> the point was if you can remember uh-huh. a rap from Justin Bieber's song, you know, for 15 years. Yep. Why couldn't you remember uh-huh. God's word? Ouch. So we can bring it to your heart. Because you have to now turn it into a rap. So if yeah. you can, for our benefit here at the church, can you memorize your your scriptures in the form of raps? Put them online. Yeah. Tag the church. Yes, please. We would love to see it. Yes, we would. <laughs> Lynn Manuel Miranda could do that. You know, we just have to get him out here. <laughs> if he could do Hamilton, <laughs> if he could take the U.S. Constitution and. He and can make, make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Also, Jacob Schwartz. Do you guys know him? Plays piano. Mm-mm. He yes. also does yes. like DJing and makes music. Okay. Okay. So yeah. now, now we're just name dropping. So yep. there Jacob needs to get on we're, that. We're expecting some <laughs> fantastic raps. High expectations. Yeah. Um, we ended the Friday night session. I actually like I talked about Daniel and the lion's den mm-hmm. and like the good work God can do in you when you're in the lion's den that the lions don't have to go away for God to do a good work in your heart. Um, And then I I ended reading a book. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a kid's book 
called the seed who is afraid to be planted. Yeah. And I have a habit of doing this. I've done this before in the past where I pick out a, a children's book that just wrecks me. And then we do it as part of the series. And everyone always starts out with like, oh, great, a children's book. I think I'll go to the bathroom. And then by the end, it's like we're all crying uh-huh. and yep. like giving our lives over to Jesus in new ways. But um, the like the like the through line of the book is that like the seed lived in a drawer mm-hmm. that was this really great life with all of his friends and was always afraid of the day that he might be taken from the drawer. Uh, and then you watch him like go through the book of like decades later being this huge tree that's providing fruit and shade and can see so much of life and how yeah. he couldn't believe that he ever wanted the life in the drawer. Yeah. Mm. Um, and sounds like a great book. It was cool. It was, <laughs> it was cool. It was a good book. It was this moment, like when we ended of like, what are those pieces of like life in the drawer that were like, this is good enough. Mm-hmm. Never wondering if God could actually have more for you. Yeah. If your life was more fully surrendered or rearranged for him. Um, but also we talked about that from like, I just felt the Lord putting it on me that that was, that could be the same thing for rice city. Mm. Like what if we're in a new era now and there's something new that God's calling us to become. Mm. And I, that's something I've just really contemplated a lot during our worship series oh. of just how, um, we've spent the first 10 years at rise becoming these people that God wanted us to be. And I look around and, you know, you never do it perfectly, but in so many ways, I'm so proud of what I've seen yeah. in our people. And I wonder like, what does God, what does God have next? Could there be even better than we've experienced? Because mm. what we've experienced has been so good in the last 10 years mm. at Rise. You know, and so I just felt like it all really started or starts with this idea of worship. Mm. Like I thought it was such a good aligning moment to start with as a church, not just worship with our like song, but transitioning this week in your message to worship with our, we like our lives. Yeah. 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 We're, uh, we're midway through the series and I think I told everybody on Sunday that it's a bridge message. It, it is going to connect like, you know, the first three services have basically been about what it means to worship God w- through song, through mm-hmm. music, through corporate worship. Um, and this had this this message that I preached on the weekend had parts of that. Like David was corporately worshiping; they were singing songs, mm-hmm. they were dancing, they were doing all that. Uh, but there was something more to it in the form of obedience mm-hmm. and uh, what that looked like. So yeah, moving into this idea of what it means to worship God with our lives, and as a church, I think what you say is actually really. Um, so true that as a church, that as we walk out and we lay down our lives for the cause mm-hmm. of Christ and we worship God in that way with the way we live day to day, yeah, God will take us places. God builds line upon line, precept on precept, he, glory to glory. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So the idea is, it, you know, glory to glory, that's a great scripture because it was like, it's good to good. It, and I think that's what in the church is. I think Rice City has been incredible. And I believe that Rice City will continue to be incredible. Like mm. God's going to keep doing great things. Yeah. So. Hmm. Mm. Now, actually, that scripture you just brought up reminds me of one that you had talked about towards the end. Mm-hmm. The idea that better is one day in the court of God than a thousand days mm-hmm. elsewhere. Uh huh. Um, actually, I, I think we have it over here. We finally found that. Um, I was looking around for it. I'm like, it's in the 80s somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 84, verse 10. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than to live the good life in the homes of the wicked. Yeah. Uh, which sounds so poetic and powerful. And then I'm kind of like, I bet you the homes of the wicked have air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my next thought. <laughs> the, the, the homes of the wicked might be more comfortable. If I'm the gatekeeper of the house of the Lord, like, will I still get the AC as it wafts out? You know, like, is there a lunch break? Like in yeah. some ways it's can get so confusing. Like you can lose perspective so fast on earth. Yeah. Because like, I, I don't know. How do you keep that focus in your own life? Mm-hmm. Oh man. Um, I think, Every human being has desires, like things that they want, th- things that they long for, things that they prioritize. And there's things we all want, you know. Some people really want 
you know, nice things. Some people want free time, uh, like as much free time as possible. Mm -hmm. Some people, we have lots of things we want. Um, but that scripture, the heart of it, it's like, I would rather be in the place God has me, work in the place where God has me, tend to the ground where God has me, yeah. than exist in any other place. So for me, it just becomes priority. Um, if I feel like there's an area of my life that the priority is off, that I've missed the, the point of the moment, that I would rather live and exist in a different sphere or space, um, because it's more enticing, it's more comfortable, it's, mm. it's more fun, it's easier. I mean, geez, let's pick, we pick easier all the time. Uh, I'd rather do all that than to, yeah. if, if the priority's off, then what's driving my decisions? Uh, I would use, like, this is not, I didn't make this phrase up, I've heard it forever, but this idea of like leading your own thoughts. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I'm, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Ooh, are I'm we reaching, getting secret content uh, from uh, future series? Well, not future series, future messages that will be happening <laughs> soon. So <laughs> let's not get too far ahead of myself. Days from uh, now, Bobby's got nothing left. Uh, but let's just say it's it's this whole idea of leading your thoughts. It's like if I feel like my priorities are out of whack, I feel like I'm being driven by the decisions of what's easy, what's comfortable, but not what God's called me to. Um then I have to figure out a way to lead my thoughts, to lead my thinking in a different direction, to train myself what is the right way to approach something. So this idea of better is one day in your courts, better is one day, I'd rather be a gatekeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the house of the wicked. It's this idea of what is the most important, what's the biggest priority, and if it's out of whack, you have to rearrange it. Yeah. That's actually very similar to what Megan talked about. It is. At Women's Retreat. It really is. Yeah. About like leading and directing mm -hmm. your thoughts. So yeah. give us a reprise. I talked about um, like the pathways in our mind are kind of like pathways in a car. Like you know mm -hmm. how to get to your home so fast without even really thinking about it. And if we constantly think negative, the pathways in our brain are the same. It's easy to get there. But if you change that pathway and throw a fork in the road and begin to put scripture in place of that, something changes and it shifts in your mind and it can also shift in your heart. Yeah. Mm. That's good. That's so Amen. good. And Amen that's how, that's here, how the know. memorizing scripture yes. and Justin Bieber came into play. That's how it came into play. <laughs> um, what is one of your like go-to scriptures that's like you could say in a heartbeat because it's so close to your heart? Mm. Job 8, 6, and 7. If you are pure and live with complete integrity, he will rise up and restore your happy home. And though you started with little, you will end with much. Mm, it's one of my though favorites. Though you started with little, you yeah. will end with mm -hmm. much. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely a favorite. That's such a prophetic word. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> also, I love that your like, verse you know comes yep. right from Job. I'm like, oh, I here know. comes Job. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Where's the happy ones? <laughs> I like love that you jumped in there and like that became a life-changing yeah, life changing for sure. So Megan and I have been married for 19 years, mm -hmm. and um, and I have heard her quote that scripture for at mm -hmm. least 20 years, maybe 21. Yeah, so, I love yeah. that. Yeah. What's the scripture that you like repeat to yourself when your husband's just driving you crazy, <laughs> and you like need <laughs> encouragement from the Lord Jesus? Uh, Which one's that? The one about a sound mind. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> the power of love and the sound yes. mind. I'm just going to leave it alone. I had to go I'm, there. I can't. I'm going to disengage from this conversation. I cannot have a married couple on the podcast and so not funny. do something. <laughs> All right, let's switch up gears again and uh, jump back into the text. Um, you talked about when the Ark of the Covenant had been stolen and David wanted to return it to Jerusalem. Oh yeah, we yeah. Well, okay, you combine two stories there. So I talked about Excellent. yes, uh, that Efficient. the ark of the covenant was stolen by the Philistines in First mm -hmm. Samuel. In Second Samuel, it's already at Abinadab's house. It'd been there for a while, um, and David was wanting to bring it from Abinadab's house to the city of David, Jerusalem, like the center mm -hmm. uh, place. So mm -hmm. yeah, so that there's a two there. I talked a lot about the ark actually because that was sort of the. Mm -hmm. Yes, it. and it's a very uh, um, interesting thought for like people who have recently come to Jesus and like are learning the Bible mm -hmm. to be like, well, what about an ark? Like, isn't Jesus here with us? And and I wonder like if you if you're new to faith, 
like new to faith, you know, no background of like church at all. If you hear Ark, do you think Noah's Ark, like the yes. boat? And then I think Indiana Jones. Yes. Indiana Jones, of mm-hmm. course. <laughs> um, That's my next jump, mm-hmm. which it, it's actually, uh, it's interesting. Now I'm tangenting again, but I'll come back. Stay here. Um, I met so many women at women's retreat that I'd never met before that yeah. recently have come to faith and yeah. were at retreat. Yes. Like I was talking to one gal by the fire and she's like, I don't know. I've been attending church for a while. And Bobby said, is this, is this the time God's calling you? And I said, yes, it is. And I raised my hand and here I am at retreat trying to figure out wow. all about Jesus. And I'm so like, cool. That's, and another girl, I had their same story. They're like mm-hmm. well, Bobby finally got me to raise my hand at the end of that sermon. <laughs> uh, I know it was Jesus, but like, yeah. here I am. I don't know anything. Yeah. And I'm like, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You're that's in incredible. The perfect place. Mm-hmm. You know, to raise the hand, to start walking out what that means to, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, pathways of discipleship and learning what it means to be a follower of Jesus around other, like in that context, yeah. around other around women other. who are following yes. Jesus, mm-hmm. uh, grafted into the body. Yep. I talked to someone who was like, I know one other person here. Oh, wow. <laughs> that I met like in the lobby, put me somewhere. I'm like, we, <laughs> sometimes we just take for granted what it means to follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like here's someone who just like came to faith and is so hungry for Jesus that they're going to throw themselves into a group yes. of complete strangers yes. just for the opportunity to maybe get to hear more about who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. Like, man, that's how I want to, like, that's yeah. what I want my heart to be like. Yeah. That's like uncomfortable for them, but oh, yet yeah. they're like, yeah, let's do it. That's awesome. So, I mean, I was, it, and like, the really cool thing heart. is those women who showed up and who knew hardly anyone walking into it mm-hmm. will have left knowing yes. people. Oh, I watched the recap video on yeah. Sunday and I was like, oh, there's that person like laughing and smiling mm-hmm. with new people that never met before. And I'm like, I see a conversation on the sideline and I'm like, you guys don't know each other in real life. And I see God sparking something new yeah. here and there and there and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was cool. We talked a lot about at Women's Retreat about just like we use the word confession of just getting real with God mm-hmm. about what's really happening. Yeah. And then pushing people to be like, and now get out of isolation and share with somebody. Mm-hmm. And I saw so much freedom over yeah. and over and over again. Yeah, me too. At retreat from it that. It was beautiful. It was cool. Yeah. All right, going back to the cart. We back wanna, to the... We don't want to put the cart before the horse. There it is. <laughs> um, I actually was thinking about when we were... The women's ministry went through the Bible recap this year. We're getting to the end of it because we're getting to the end of the year. But I remember specifically this moment with Uz- Uzziah. Am I saying that right? Uzza. 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 See, I think I just tried to change it into my name to yeah. like match my name yeah, closer. Yeah. Um, with Uzza, and we all initially read the scripture and we're like, I feel bad for him. He was just trying to do God a favor and mm. didn't want God's ark to fall on the ground mm. and like reached out to grab it. Yeah. That was so <laughs> mean of God. <laughs> um, and so it was really, it's so, yeah. it's so important to read scripture as a whole. Yeah. Yes. And to understand, like anytime I encourage you, anytime you read something in scripture and you're like, what? Let that motivate you yeah. to answer the question of what? Yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. answer it. If yeah. something happens and you're like, I just don't understand. You're like, great. That, don't, don't make that a statement. Make that a dot, dot, dot. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Let's go. It's yeah, easy. It you out. could read the scripture and be like, <laughs> how dare God? And then be like, blame God and get mad at God for Mm -hmm. not knowing the full context of that scripture. Yes. Um, There's a lot more weight to it. And for those of you listening, watching uh, that don't know the weight of the moment is that um, Uzzah was the son of Abinadab. So obviously grew up around the ark, Mm -hmm. knowing familiar with it. The ark would not have been a, an uncommon thing for Uzzah or his brother Ohio. Um, but the Ark had parameters. In Ohio. You know, there's parameters that that God specifically instructed. The Ark would have been 400 years, give or take, uh, old at that point in time, so made 400 years pr- prior. Um, it carried the name of the Lord of the Heaven's Armies in, on it, like it's the, the throne place of the presence of God. Mm-hmm. It was s- such a significant <coughs> thing, and, um, and they just decided to do with it whatever they wanted to do with it. Imagine if the Constitution of the United States was in your house. Yeah. And that's not even <laughs> as old as the Ark was or as precious as the Ark was. And you and your brother were like, it's cool. We'll just throw it in the yeah. back of my VW bug and we'll just drive it on over. Yeah, yeah. We'll, 
Yeah. We'll just let anybody like open it up and read it, fold it back up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Put the crazies on it. Just treat it like it's any common uh, yeah. thing. And and that's sort of what they they did here. Now there were some things in the text. Um, I didn't even, I read mo like I read parts of the text, but I told most of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, but in the beginning part of the chapter, second Samuel six, it says they put it on a new cart Mm -hmm. and they, they hitched it up to some oxen. Like they, they, they treated it not poorly. It wasn't void of reverence, but it was just anti what God had instructed. Right. It was just done my own way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's put it simply. Yeah. yeah. My and way is going to be good enough for this. Exactly. I don't think I need to consult the scriptures. Yeah. I, I don't, I, got I don't need mm. to, I don't need to consider <laughs> what God would think in this situation. I'm going to do it the way that, you know, and, and I, whew, I wonder, I wonder if Dave was like, you know, or as in Ohio or if a Benadab, I mean, they were all there. They would have agreed to this thing. Um, I wonder if somebody was like, yeah, I mean, that's cool, but how much cooler will this be? If I do it this way, it's better. It's not, it's, it's not just what I want. It's better than God's way. How much cooler will it look when the ark rolls in and the, the oxen are oh, oh, on the ground and the, <laughs> it's on this cart, brand new cart yeah. that we made. Like what will people think when they see this? I've got yeah. this modern day vision of like that, uh, like pastors coming in on a, a helicopter. They like parachuted <laughs> in and they got the Bible. Oh, that's next Sunday's message. Oh, that's, sorry. That's, that's why I'm going to come cool in, parachute, you giving know. Giving it away. Yeah. Giving it away. <laughs> giving it away. What are some things that our culture is just so used to being like, no, I got this. I don't need to consult scripture. Like, oh. and we get off track Mm. quicker than we could even understand well culture is a weird word to use Mm -hmm. i would think i would say like church life okay Mm. what are some things in church life that we become so familiar because we would actually yeah culture's not uh checking scripture yeah what they're doing is like just doing the thing but like (laughs) but like in church life there are uh, there's a multitude of things that we that become sacred that aren't sacred in the text and that become ignored that are supposed to be important in the text Um, and so what are they? I think it would like, I'm not the expert on the American church. Like, I don't, you know, I don't know every church in the world. I don't even know every church in San Diego and no one truly does, but uh, every church would have their things, which means every believer would have their Mm -hmm. things. So for instance, since we're talking about worship, let me, uh, I've brought this up on the podcast once before. So for the 150 people that listen to the podcast, you get to hear it twice. Um, maybe someone else listened to it. Um, Dawson, you don't have to turn this one into a real man. Uh, but (laughs) if we talk about the fact that we come together as a church and we, we come together, we worship God through song. We, uh, participate in generosity and giving of our tithes and our offerings. We come around the word of God to be challenged and encouraged. Why we gather on a Sunday or anytime we gather, Mm -hmm. we don't do it to tick boxes or to run a schedule. We do it for specific purpose and reason. One of the reasons includes worshiping God through song. That's part of it. So, um, so Mm -hmm. if uh, the 150 people who listen to this podcast, and I'm being generous, there's probably like, I don't know, maybe there's a hundred, um, but show (laughs) yourself, put it in the comments. (laughs) Let us know. Uh, but the people actually listen to the podcast. This, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm preaching to the choir, but if, that part of church, if you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll show up whenever. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to eat a couple donuts before I go in. Oh, yeah, the music's a little too quiet for my liking, a little too loud for my liking. I don't like this style of song. Like, we get hung up on all these things. And so mm-hmm. quickly, we turn the first bit of our service where we're worshiping God through song into a musical performance that we get to judge whether or not it's good or bad. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we treat it casually. We have such a familiarity with it that we, we don't treat it as sacred as an opportunity for us to encounter God, to worship the almighty God. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's just one thing. And I don't know a pastor in America that would tell you that everyone in their church shows up on time. Yeah. And it's not to pick on people who don't <laughs> yeah. show up on time. That's not the point. <clears throat> But I, I think for me, it's a question of the heart. Yeah, uh, I was that person, just so you know. Oh. Like when I first got like saved, became a Christian, it was during a worship service. And then after that, I was just like, whatever, like I can sing in the car. I'm here to learn the word of God, mm. like mm. get done with this, like emotional, whatever. 
And now, like as I've matured in my faith, so many of the most powerful, meaningful encounters with God in my life have been during worship. Yeah. Not that they couldn't be elsewhere. I've heard right. so many stories of them being elsewhere. But now I'm almost the opposite. I'm like, eh, I can hear any preacher preach anytime. You know, give me the worship. You know what's funny about that? <laughs> when I got saved, when I gave my life to Jesus, Russellville Church of God, 1999. Well, you know, I was going there in 99. Oh, and I was in the second grade. And so, uh, thanks. Oh, Appreciate that. Awesome. I was a senior in high school. <laughs> Youngin. Second um, grade. Oh my gosh. So, uh, but during so that old. time, I remember thinking sometimes I was like, "Why is the pastor getting them in preaching? Can't we just do more worship?" <laughs> and we now started ex- <laughs> on the other end. Yeah, of the now I'm the pastor preaching. I'm like, let's weave in some more time for the message now. Uh, <laughs> You grew up in church. I did, yeah. So what was, was it a different experience? Was this always like, oh man, you it's, to expect both? Yeah, I expect both. Like my parents, like they lead worship. They do a little bit of evangelism within worship stuff. And so my mom sings, my dad plays the guitar. It's beautiful. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. But I grew up that worship was just part of your life. Like it's not just a Sunday morning thing. That is a huge part of it, but it's not the only part of it. And so I grew up, church Sunday morning, Sunday Megan's, night. Megan's mom and dad like recorded an album. Yeah. 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 They had like a, a whole band. I don't called, know if it's available anywhere. I don't know anywhere. if it is anymore either, but yeah. it was called Divine Direction and it was awesome. My mom oh, I love writes that. beautiful songs. Do you sing? Like, I mean, I can a little bit. I mean, bit, you but sang like, great at the women's retreat. Well, Your you. rapping skills are Oh, excellent. they're That's fantastic. Yes. yes. I will say Megan's a better singer than I am. That's 100%. for sure. 100%. We all know that. <laughs> My wow. goodness. We're all going to be crowding in yeah. to stand yeah. next to Bobby uh, during worship from so, now on. Someone mentioned in staff and they're like, I've noticed a lot of people are moving, like they're sitting up front in the church. And <laughs> and as a pastor, all pastors love that, even if they say they don't. There's something nice about having yeah. people up front. But now we know why. They just want to hear how bad of a singer I really am. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get close. Now the um, first like three rows are going to be filled solid mm-hmm. yeah. for this Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'll be great. Is it because you want to do one of those like dive things into the crowd? You know, uh, one of those dive things? Yeah. Um, uh, what is that called? Crowd surfing. There it is. There, there it is. is. Um, it's a dive, dive though. If they don't catch a dive you. Thing. Dive it thing. is a dive <laughs> thing. It can get painful if they don't catch you. That's that's plan B. 2025 vision. The crowd surf. Perfect. I'm, ki- I'm kidding. For everyone who's nervous. Um, uh, Jumping back to things that are... <laughs> Important in the church. <laughs> um, I have a confession of my own to make. Okay. So um, we ended women's retreat this weekend sharing communion together. Mm-hmm. And it was so beautiful. We were like in this like smaller room. The acoustics were so great. We were singing, you are worthy of it all. And we passed out the communion elements. And um, I read the scripture and I was like, we take this bread in remembrance of you. I said, go ahead and take the bread. And I look down at my communion cup and I go to pull the, the film back that has a little bread. Mm -hmm. There is no bread. I bought the wrong supplies (laughs) and there was no bread in body of Christ, Uh period. So what did you use? I opened it and I went (gasps) like in front of everyone. Uh And then Janelle Malik pops out of nowhere with a baggie of goldfish. Yes. Wait, wait. (laughs) Do you mean she jumped out of nowhere with a bag of unleavened, unleavened cheese flavored bread? Is that in Jesus name? In Jesus name. (laughs) name. We blessed it all the same. (laughs) What I really love is that the women's team had figured it out like two steps before. Nice. And they were all panicking in the back, like trying to figure this thing out. And then just magically appeared right on the mark. Love Mm. it. And we, I ate goldfish in Jesus name. (laughs) You know, am I fired? Cheese and wine. Those go together, right? (laughs) Am I fired? (laughs) <laughs> it ended up being a beautiful moment, but now that I've made that confession, I feel a lot better. You feel a lot better. I feel a lot better. Um, and I want to know, was there anything that you wanted to put into this message that didn't make it in, or maybe you did it in second service, not in first. If you guys haven't figured this out yet, there's a good amount like mm-hmm. of, of like bonus content per services. So if yeah. you were to attend both services, you would actually get some different stories from one service time to another. That's so true. Which makes me like kind of get a FOMO thing going on here where I feel uh, like let, I have to be like, what did you put in the service? Let, let, me, there. let me throw this out there. It's a 10% margin. So 90% of it's the same. Yeah. But, but it's I, the best 10%. But I always add in or take away something. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember what the differences were between the two services on Sunday. There were some things that I, uh, that I felt like I leaned into because I went... 
probably four minutes longer in the 11 than I did the nine. See, so there were, there's something in there. There was something uh-huh. in there, but I don't remember what the differences were. Um, in the writing of the message, there's so many things that in that story, like we could have done a three part series on second Samuel six, Absolutely. just to spend more time in it. There's so much context. Um, the one where I, I had a subtle mention of, uh, McCall, Michael, M I C H A L mm-hmm. Saul's daughter, David's wife and her frustration, uh, towards him. And she says to him, you strip down naked, like any, like mm-hmm. really, like you're just down mm-hmm. there. And this idea, um, like I didn't talk about it on Sunday in great length. I might've said something because yeah, again, it gets thrown out there, yeah. but this idea that he stripped off his kingly robe. And what that means is he stripped off the identity of who I did add this to the 11, mm-hmm. didn't I? I don't think I said this in the nine. <laughs> um, he stripped off his identity of being King David, and he was mm-hmm. just the man David, wearing a linen ephod or a priestly garment. And he, it's this idea of when we approach God, um, do we approach God like, hi, God, I am the business owner yes. of this organization, mm-hmm. and I am worth millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. God, I am I am a God, I'm coming to you with my identity and this is it or do we go to God and lay down who we are and say God, I'm not it's not about me and who I am. It's it's about you. Mm-hmm. And David's imagery there when he's like, look, you th- she calls him naked. The point wasn't he was there bearing himself to the world. The point was he was there not dressed in the in the pomp and circumstance and the grandiose of what mm-hmm. he was. And it's interesting because she had a father who strayed from God so far and would have been a guy who, um, who would have been the guy with all the, all yeah. the pizzazz and the grandiose stuff. And she saw what happened in his life. And even though she saw the consequence of his backwards priorities Mm -hmm. she still wanted that same kind of man in her husband david and it's like this like as so a fool repeats his folly a dog returns to its vomit scripture um it's like she's seen the negative effects of it and but she still wanted him to be that and david's like i'm not your father i'm not saul and this is like every marital fight I've ever heard of before. <laughs> There's some truth to that. I'm as not well. your dad, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm my own man. <laughs> I did relate though with the controlling aspect of like she married David because she wanted to be like she was queen. Like that that's her identity. And if he goes out and makes himself look like an idiot, what does that make her? There's this pivotal moment too in their marriage uh when David sort of goes back and she has to like, I can't remember the exact text, but basically he has to sneak away. And then she has the option of agreeing with her husband or agreeing with her father. Mm -hmm. And she chose, she chose Saul over David in that moment. Um, And so there's a lot of little things like that. David is an interesting mixed bag. He, (laughs) I, I, I've, I've preached like a 12 week series one time just on the life of David. Um, and so th- I think there's so much you can learn yeah. from his life, um, so much you can learn from his walk with God. And, uh, and his stumble. And th- and well, his, that's his walk with and God. And get back up. And his, his, it's a know, true journey. It is. It, it's true. And that's what I love about the story of David is that God could have shielded us from all the dirty details. Mm-hmm. He could have shielded us from mm-hmm. all the mistakes and presented the per- a perfect man. Right, but which he, is what you see in other historical accounts. Of yeah, mm-hmm. of course. He who wins yeah, <laughs> writes the history, writes the history books. books. And so you don't see that with David. You see countless mistakes. That It's not just the Bathsheba mistake um, or the Uriah mistake. Yeah. Um, it's it's all the mistakes he makes. It's and the Uzzah mistake and the cart mistake yeah. and, the, and it's, all of it. It's when he was at the end of his life, he decides to number all of his troops to find out if he can win a battle as opposed to going to God and asking if he can win the battle. And like the, these little things that he does along the way shows he wasn't infallible or perfect. I have this idea of why I think he was a man after God's own heart. Um, Shoot. And, Go for it. Um, and the idea is the fact that in the Old Testament, you're made right by God. Uh, you're made right to God by sacrifice. 
constantly sacrificed. Mm-hmm. That's the right, the way to be made right. Mm-hmm. Um, David, David seems to understand the heart of repentance before before it seems so clear and obvious in right. the yeah. in, in the Two Old Testament perspective, it is the Old Testament is, you know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You get what you deserve. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you you see this terminology and but David approaches God like he's a father who will forgive and love. And he doesn't run when he makes a mistake from God. He runs to God. And yeah. so I believe that part of this, he's a man after God's own heart, is he had an understanding that God was a forgiving God that you can repent and you can mm-hmm. turn your heart back to God and God is faithful. And that sort of that messianic uh, imagery that we see in Jesus um, is alive in the heart of David in an early day. Do you think Jesus danced like that? Like what? Like David danced. Um, Do you think he ever got down at weddings or? Yeah, I think he did. You think so? I think he did. I think, Je- <laughs> listen, I think Jesus told jokes. I think Jesus would have been funny. I think he, I think he would have, yeah, like everybody wanted to be around him. Um, it seems, you know, he's, he's having to walk into the wilderness to get away from people. So 100%, I think. He's having to walk on water to get away from people. <laughs> exactly. I think he was probably, I mean, he probably, you know, had lots of moments. He had probably had moments of depth and seriousness and moments of levity and joy. And I think he represented the totality of the fruits of the spirit. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, he def- he had to dance. He's probably a better dancer than... Than, He'd be uh, the perfect dancer. Us. He'd probably be better than that Australian break dancer. Oh, yeah. Or maybe he would be exactly like maybe. the Australian break dancer. <laughs> maybe. He's like, I inspired her. There was nothing about his look that it made men attract. <laughs> so like maybe, maybe he's like just like a normal average dancer. Jesus was an average dancer. This is you right here, Jesus, all day long. Right <laughs> Who knows? Some, Final- <laughs> someone <laughs> out there on the like comments this. is going to be like... I've, they were the with us up till bad. the very moment of right here. <laughs> the uh, Final question. That everyone is dying to know in relation to this particular whatever. Why didn't we sing that early 2000s song? No, 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 no. Hey. Well, what about. Can you keep going so I can know, know what song you're talking the, about? Like, I will dance, I will sing to be mad for my king. It's all about David dancing. I, I don't, you didn't I sing don't, that? I don't, I don't think know so. I'll become even more undignified than this. No, no. But can you keep going? Keep going, yes, <laughs> yes I love let's it. go. Let's go. I don't know where you guys were on I, the, the East only Coast song in the I early knew 2000s. of is I want to dance like David. No, no, this dance. one like. Da, na, na, are you playing the piano? Da, na, na, what is this? Yeah, yeah that's that it. Yeah. Listen, these two are teaming up on me. So if you know this song, <laughs> I'm expecting you to stand up for me. I got slaughtered with the hoodie versus sweater. Totally and a hoodie. Yes, yes, you did. Yes. Don't leave me hanging. Totally if you don't know that, which song. actually, what Who was the name? that song? I'm gonna go with David Crowder. I'm gonna go with someone. So really whatever song up. Mariah just made mm-hmm. up and sung, uh, verse the the other one. I want to dance like David dance with the. No one knows that song. Let no. us know which one you know. Uh, we'll call Mariah's number two, so you think of her second and my number one. Um, That's and- it. <laughs> Digging deeper is over. We've reached the end. <laughs> We've reached the end. <laughs> See you next week, Rise City. Yeah. <laughs>